Hey everybody, I just wanted to pop on for a few minutes to tell you about a new film that's just been released on Netflix, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. This is an adaptation of the novel by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows, which I read and reviewed last October. There is a link to that video up here in this corner, and also in the description box down below if you'd like to hear my thoughts on the book. If you'd like the short version, I really liked it. Set in England in 1946, this story follows Juliet Ashton, a writer famous for her comical pieces about the war, who is looking for a new subject, who becomes taken with the story of an unusual book club that formed on the island of Guernsey during the long, difficult years of the German occupation. Juliet is played in the film by Lily James, who must be one of the busiest actresses working right now. I feel like she shows up everywhere. She does a fine job as Juliet, and the rest of the cast is very satisfying as well. This is kind of a mini Downton Abbey reunion, bringing together four cast members from that show, including Lily James, Jessica Brown Finley, Penelope Wilton, and Matthew Good. This is not the sole reason I would recommend watching this movie, but I do have to say, there is not just one, not just two, but three very attractive men in this movie. <laughs> Matthew Good, who I've always liked and who makes a lovely, wonderful Sydney, Glenn Powell, who I thought was super cute in Hidden Figures, and McKeel Houseman, who makes Dozzy Adams so much dreamier than I was expecting. So that was all very nice. I'm not saying a movie has to have good-looking guys in it, but it's a plus. And two characters whose quirky lovableness were especially well realized on film were Eben Ramsey, played by Tom Courtney, and Isola Privy, played by Katherine Parkinson. There are certainly things the movie changes, or leaves out, or condenses, but nothing so significant that I wasn't able to have a really good time watching the movie. I did notice a couple smaller things here and there, um, but I think for the most part, the story, the main story, and the characters are faithfully and enjoyably rendered. There are a couple more prominent characters who are missing, Sydney's sister for one, and one of the main society members is taken out, which surprised me, but I liked the idea of Evan's grandson as a replacement. Also, there is a character left out entirely who was pretty important in one section of the book, However, I didn't realize until much later that that whole plotline had been cut, so I guess I didn't miss it. The written correspondence angle is woven in, of course, as it should be since it's instrumental in bringing Juliet to Guernsey, but it does fade out fairly early. I do consider the epistolary style an important distinguishing feature of this novel, something that sets it apart from its fellow contemporary historical fiction set in World War II books. <laughs> Plus I'm fond of it, so it made reading the book all the more interesting to me. But carrying it throughout the whole movie would be difficult to execute and potentially tedious, so I can see why they trimmed it down. I was happy enough with what letters they did keep, and I don't mind the fact that they converted certain things to face-to-face -face communication or telephone calls, which, for a visual medium, does make more sense. Overall, I found this to be an enjoyable, feel-good film and a nice, satisfying adaptation that doesn't feel like it's a full two hours long. Oh, and I love what they did with the end credits, where they have snippets of audio from society meetings in which members, including some new additions, read excerpts from books and argue about them. It was really fun. So, if you have a Netflix subscription, or are closely related to someone who has one who's willing to share, as is my case, I hope you'll check this one out. I do recommend it, especially if you like good war, post-war stories with a nice, warm, fuzzy romance, and you're a fan of letter writing, and reading, and writing, all of that stuff. And you don't have to have read the book to enjoy the movie. My mom has not read the book, and she really, really liked it. She said it had a lot of things that she really enjoys seeing in a movie. So that's a pretty good recommendation. That's it for this quick review. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll check out the movie or the book, either, both, whatever interests you, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I'll see you again in a couple days. Thanks for watching!